Yo, what's up guys, my name is Mr. Freeze 2244 and welcome to another Elusive Tiger Arcade Contract. This is going to be called the Vitae. There's three levels to this one. I'm going to be showing you Silent Assassin for all three levels. Starting off, the first one is going to be called the uh, Liability. And uh, the only restriction for this one is we were only allowed one pacification, but it's super easy anyway. So we're going to start on the default loadout. Uh, default location of the club entrance. We're only bringing along a coin and that is all we're going to need. From the very start, we are going to go round the back, and if you have this, don't have this shortcut unlocked, feel free to just go through the frisk zone, and you'll end up behind over here anyway. The only reason why I took that shortcut is just because I don't want to get frisked, can't be bothered. Uh, but if you haven't got that shortcut unlocked, just feel free to pass through the frisk zone, you'll end up in the same place anyway. Uh, so we're going to make our way towards Terence Chesterfield, he's the liability elusive target. And we're going to follow the same thing we did in the previous Elusive Tiger Arcade. The method is exactly the same, except for the ending. We're going to take a different e exit just to make things a little bit different. So we're going to come over to this area over here, take out our coin. And we're going to use our instinct to see where the liability is. It's going to be right there in the middle. He's the one that's moving up the stairs right now. What the idea is, we're going to push him into this little, uh, this little river here. So he's currently taking a drink. He's going to momentarily come to walk, to walk towards us. Sometimes he'll stand in the middle of the area, but eventually he will come over towards this fence. Once he's close to this fence, and I'm just about to sit down, just throw a coin at this little wall here. Don't throw it on the ground, throw it at the wall. And if you throw it at the wall, he will get a question mark above his head, and he's going to come over to investigate what he heard. He's going to get followed by his entourage, so we're not allowed to eliminate those. What we're going to do is put a coin right there on the edge. But it's going to be followed by his entourage. What we're going to do is just make sure that uh, they don't see us take him out. So just go ahead and bump into them both. Just to slow them down. Gives Terence enough time to discover that coin. And once you've done it for a couple of seconds, we're going to drop the two remaining coins that we have. Head over towards Terence and kick him in. That's going to be an accident kill. His body is going to be automatically hidden. And now we can head straight to an exit. It's just as simple as that. We are going to take the, uh, the moped exit. And you don't have to take this exit, you can take this the safe one and go to the main entrance. The only variable about this ending here is the, the camera, but you shouldn't have to worry too much as long as you follow my instruction. So we're going to subdue this guy, take the scooter key, and with the scooter key we are going to jump over this little fence. As soon as you jump over it, just don't move. We're going to wait for the camera to pan all the way back to the left before we get past it because this grid is wrong and it will spot you even outside the grid. So just be wary of that. So we're going to wait for it to pan all the way to the left and that's when we're going to make our move. Stick to the right, hug the wall and we're going to take the scooter exit. Exit mission, done. Now if you brought along a pistol and took that shortcut, you could have just shot that camera out if you wanted to. But if you really don't want to take this exit, you can just take the main entrance exit. So there's a pop up bicycle at the start so go ahead and take that if you want to but there you go it's a silent assassin for level one let's go ahead and move on to level two now level two is the ascension the ascensionist i think it's called but uh, again we've only got the one pacification complication and uh, we're we restricted to this start location we're going to bring on the fireball and coin uh, we're not going to bring along a pistol because we need to get through a frisk zone that is uh, a new thing for this particular elusive target so you have to get through a frisk zone and we need to get upstairs so we're only allowed one pacification for this mission so we are going to take advantage of that and because we don't have any ideal equipment I mean, you can make this a lot easier if you had some lethal poison vial you can go ahead and poison her tea that would be super easy if you have lethal poison do that trust me but if you don't have any equipment and this is your default loadout go ahead and carry on following what i'm doing so i climbed up the vine right there jumped over this railing we need to get ourselves a security guard disguise. So we're going to wait for this guy that's patrolling around the area to stop moving next when he stands next to this guard here. Once he does that, we're going to throw a coin in this corner. The reason why we waited is because if we throw a coin too early or too late, then the other guard's going to see us take out the other one. So that's what we need to do. Make sure he walked all the way over to the left before we threw the coin for the distraction. Now we can go ahead and subdue him and stick his body in the, uh, the closet. I'm going to take his disguise and, in, most importantly, his weapon. Now the other guard, he's an enforcer, so just make sure you are 
getting past him while he's got his back to you. We're going to head now toward the kitchen. And in the kitchen, there's going to be a propane flask. So that's the method. If you're wondering what method I'm going for for this, it is the propane flask method. Now, it's one of them sort of things that uh, it works, but it's not without its element of risk. And I'll get to that one once we get there. So first of all, here's the propane flask in the kitchen. We're going to climb these stairs now. Head through this kitchen area. And you'll end up behind the bar in the main zone. So what we're going to do from here is head on upstairs and set the trap. We're actually going to set the trap in the bathroom. If you want to know where the target is, use your instinct. And you'll see the little white blip above her head. She's a super enforcer, so she'll see through any disguise that you will wear. Now, come into this, uh, come into this bathroom right here. I'm going to throw the propane flask around about there. As long as it's by the door, it's fine. And it's not near anybody else. Everyone's got a relatively big, diff uh, big radius where that explosion is going to take place. This guy is a bit of a, a jarhead. Some cheeky guards in this game. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is just wait for the target to come to the bathroom. She's going to come here momentarily after she talks to someone outside. And then she's going to pass through here. Now, if you don't want to take her out as soon as she walks in, she's going to go to the mirror and she's going to basically talk to herself. And then she's going to exit the bathroom. It gives you an opportunity, it gives you two opportunities there to uh, shoot that gas canister from within one of the cubicles and create an explosion. It's going to be an accident kill because it's an environmental explosion. So uh, you don't need to worry about uh, losing Silent Assassin. That's not going to happen. You are going to retain it. But uh, one thing is going to happen as well is everyone's going to become aggro. They're going to be turning into enforcers. So we're going to make sure we stay out of sight after we've caused this explosion. Therefore, we can uh, make sure we don't get spotted after that. So what we're going to do is swap, swap shoulders. So we are on aiming a lot more easier for us to aim. Wait for it to come in. Go ahead and explode it. And then we're going to hide it in the closet right there. And then what we're waiting for at this moment is for the enforcers to the blips, white blips above their head to to basically just disappear. And then once we have a clear sight, we can head to an exit. And it, to be honest, it doesn't really take that long for them to go back to the normal routine. You'll see them put their gun back in their pocket. That's when you know it's all right to start, you know, start leaving. So this one in the bathroom. That's um. A little bit of an issue. I think he might have heard the gunshot. That's probably why he's an enforcer. But once he walks to the other side, that's when we're going to get past him. Just be careful of the mirror. So what we've got to do now is head straight to where we started. And that is basically the elevator exit. You can head to any one you want to. There's one upstairs as well. If you have the elevator doors open, that would be a little bit quicker than this. Be careful of this enforcer as well at the end. But other than that, um, for a default loadout, it's not very. Uh, it's not really much you can do with it for a default loadout, but I highly recommend bringing the lethal poison if you have it. That is a much better way of doing it than this. But for the consistency's sake, obviously, I'm doing the. Um, doing all these guides with the default loadout in mind. But that's how you essentially do level 2. Silent Assassin. So moving on to level 3, we have uh, the Heartbreaker once again. And uh, again, the one pacification rule is still there. So we're going to start at the very default loadout, uh, which is the Winery view view Viewpoint. I can get my words out. And we brought along the pistol, the fiber wire, and a coin. So we are going to take advantage of that one pacification once again. We're going to use the most powerful disguise on the map, and that's this disguise right here. Go ahead and subdue him and drag his body over to the other side. His body is not going to get, get found, so don't worry. Grab his mercenary disguise and his weapon. If you're wondering, this assault rifle is the one you unlock after completing this contract, so you can have a good look at it as it jingles about on 47's back as it's stuck to his back by glue. Uh, what we're going to do now is basically gather some evidence against the Heartbreaker and show a document, a secret document, to one of the followers that are following him around and that's going to give us an opportunity to get Philo Newcomb by himself so we're going to do is leap over this area here there's an enforcer in the area so just watch out for him over, open up this van take out the lethal poison pill jar and take out the documents 
so you probably should have grabbed two items there. We're obviously going to use this poison to poison him, and we're going to use the documents against him to uh, isolate him. So now heading to the main party area, he should be near the dance floor. He will be very noticeable with his white trousers and brown jacket. You'll have two ladies following him. Just go ahead and show the documents to one of them. Doesn't matter which one. They'll basically make an excuse, panic, and tell him that they've got to go. And that's when he walks off and carries on his routine without them. So, now we've all got that done now, we are going to head down to the cinema area. And to get down there, we need to get through a frisk zone. I don't know why, because we've got a huge ass assault rifle on our back. But nevertheless, we have to get through this frisk zone to get past, otherwise this, this guard here gets all aggravated. Yeah, you'll see Philo Nukum in the background there, heading his way down here. Now there's going to be multiple people down here. Now when I first did this, uh, the same strategy in my very first video of this, um, some people were saying that they could potentially get spotted by doing this method. And that's because there's, there's a few people in the area. Now, it, quite consistently, that you won't get spotted doing this. But if you want a dead-on way of doing this, just make sure you wait for this woman here um, to stand still. And then we're going to chuck a corn on the opposite side of the room just to get everyone in that area to turn around. That gives us, you know, gives us a good opportunity to crouch and poison this glass of wine. You'll have nobody looking at you at that point in time. So it's essentially an easy way of poisoning that glass of wine. You don't have to hang around for this to happen. He is going to come down the stairs. He's going to take a sip of that wine and he is going to die on the spot for a poison kill. His body is probably going to get found, but it doesn't matter because poison kills and accident kills don't negate your silent assassin rating when the bodies are found. So what we're going to do is head straight to an exit and just wait for the, the, uh, the assassination to happen. And it's just as simple as that, really. Out of all the three uh, so far, I'd say this is the second easiest out of the three. Ascensionist being the diff most difficult one. I think the Ascensionist should have been the last if you are trying to escalate the difficulty uh, because the Ascensionist is the only tricky one, really. Uh, when you're doing it with no loadout. But this all three of these loose targets are quite target quite simple and straightforward Expert really. But there we go. Target eliminated. We can now exit the mission. And we can unlock our new shiny new assault rifle that's been in the game for a year. Can't wait to use it. And I'm gonna show you exactly what it's good for right after this. So let's get a confirmation of that silent assassin. And a confirmation of that unlock of the assault rifle that was, that's just been added to the game uh, for available for use that is this is what it looks like the Sega AR552 tactical and it's really good and I'll show you a good use for it and so we're here in Wilton Creek and I just dropped the weapon on the floor right there and uh, there's a guard right here so I'm going to grab his attention that's a really good usage for this for this assault rifle look so if you are using a assault rifle, I highly recommend doing this strategy. Ugh, no way. So that's going to do it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully that has helped you out with uh, the Vitae um, Elusive Target Arcade Contract. Drop a like on the video if it did help you out or if you enjoyed it. Again, drop a like. Subscribe if you are new to the channel or just subscribe if you haven't at all already. Hit the bell notification to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Consider supporting me on Patreon or even becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button below or clicking the link in the description. Big shout out to all my new Psycho Assassin members. That includes Arjao, Paul at Home, Bedry, Mark Davis, Constantine Mueller, Wondering Wendy B and Ghost Warrior. Thank you for becoming Psycho Assassin members this month. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.